Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Start of July, start of a whole new month of pens in use for me. This month, my theme is the Italian connection. Can you guess what that means? Did you guess pens from Italy? If so, you'd be correct. So these are all pens that I've bought over the last couple of years that have come from Italy. There's three from one manufacturer, two from a second manufacturer, and then one from a third manufacturer. So a three, two, one combo as well. Join me now down on the mat. Let's start to take a look at the pens that I'm going to be using in July of 2022. So here we are down on the mat. Time to take a look at the pens that I'm going to be using during July of 2022. The first pen is this one. This is a Visconti. Turn it around then the Visconti names are right way up. This is the Visconti Breeze in Blueberry. I do get quite amazed how they get the name Blueberry for this because to me it's nowhere near the colour of a Blueberry. I think this is more, if they'd, have called, if they'd have called it Visconti Sky or something like that, I'd have really seen it because this is, you know, the blues of the sky, but then you've got like clouds floating through it. That's what it reminds me of. It's a nice pen. It's fairly light. It feels like it's like a plasticky type resin. I do like the clip. It's a Visconti clip and it's nice and springy. The cap just pulls off. Now, this pen is a magnetic pen. So as I get in close to there, you can see the magnet triggers and pulls that in. I have an issue with that. This is fine. It's fine for me since it's a nice, easy way of actually putting the cap onto the pen. Where my problem comes in, if you've got a device in your chest that, that could be affected by magnetism, like a pacemaker, something like that, you can't actually put the pen in your shirt pocket because it's too close to that device and there could be issues with it interfering. So yes, I know it's there. It's a brilliant idea. I'm just not that keen on it. Let's do some writing though. I don't know. Before we do that writing, the nib is fairly small. I would say it's a number five size nib. And this is a cartridge converter. It's a Visconti converter. So now we'll do some writing. So we have here a Visconti breeze. The nib is a broad. It's a nice broad nib. I really like writing with this. It's smooth. Maybe I've been lucky, but both of the Viscontis I've got, yes, dropping a hint, there'll be another one. They've both got very nice, very smooth nibs. In terms of cost, this was 163 Australian dollars. It's a lot of money for the cheapest pen that we're going to be looking at today. I do think it's worth it though, because as I say, it's a nice pen. It really fits nice. It's nice to write with. The ink is by Robert Oster. And it's called Fire and Ice. Now I'm only working with the sample of this. So once this has run out, I'm afraid there won't be any more. It's nice. It should have a bit of a red sheen to it don't see much of that that's something i will look for as i'm testing during the month but i certainly see this nice gorgeous blue color but i don't see a lot of that sheen coming through at all Let's look at drying times so we go immediate 10 seconds 30 seconds almost dry at 30 seconds one minute Yep, as we would expect, after a minute, nice and dry. I do like the combination of this ink and this pen. So this is the Visconti Breeze with Robert Oster Fire and Ice. Pen number two. Don't know how well it's going to show up on this paper. Maybe if I put it over that ink, we might see it a little bit better. This is a Leonardo Ferrari. This is in white salt. 
I love the color of this material. It's so nice. I may even look at getting a Memento Zero at some time in this color. I really like it. I like the shape. It's unusual. A bit like a torpedo in my mind, or maybe a cigar. I'm not sure how you would best describe it. Gorgeous material. So we've got this white, and we've got the rhodium, all that silver color to go with it. I think they work well together. The nib on here is a 1.1 stub. There we are. That's the Leonardo nib. One of the things I've noticed, the ink I've got in here is blue, and it's stained the bottom here. Now, I've only had this. This really is still the first fill of this pen. I need to look at that. So hopefully during the month, this pen will run out of ink and I can give it a really good clean and then put a different color in and see what happens. Maybe it's just a one off. I don't know, but it's something I need to experiment with. This pen, it's a captured converter. You can see there, there's not a lot of ink in there now. So hopefully this will run out fairly shortly. I've never tried to take this converter out. And put that body back on. I can also get to the converter here. So there's the end of the knob. If I wanted to just take that top cap off. But I've got to be honest. If I'm going to fill it. I just might as well unscrew the main body from the section. Because it's not much different than taking that end off is it. It's a nice pen though. Feels nice in the hand. I say this gorgeous, this gorgeous material. You see why it's called white salt as I'm turning it around can't you. Let's do some writing with this. So here we have a Leonardo. I know there's a big long name. I'm just going to call it Leonardo. This is the Ferrari. You can see where that 1.1 stub is coming through now already. In terms of cost, we do take a jump. This is 230 Australian dollars. And that was through buying it from Europe and having it shipped over. Because of the cost, it was free shipping, but certainly a lot cheaper than trying to buy here in Australia. The ink in here is by Diamine. And it's Asa Blue. I like this ink. It's a nice bright ink. I think it goes well with this salt colour. If I do change it, Obviously, it will not be blue. I'm very blue heavy today in my inks. So I do need to get some different colours in there. I'm not sure. I might try a purple. But I've got a couple of browns that I'd like to try in a 1.1 stub nib. So not quite 100% certain which one I'm going to use in there just yet. Let's look at drying times. Immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Finally, one minute. After a minute, yeah, that's nice and dry. And we can see on these hashes where that nature of that stub nib is coming through. So the down lines, definitely a lot wider than the cross lines. So this is the Leonardo Ferrari and Diamine Asa Blue. My next pen, it's a blue pen this time. Definitely can see this one against the paper, can't we? This is by Tobaldi and it's a Tobaldi Bononia. The color is called Bora Bora. I love the color of this. It's a bit like that spaghetti resin. So you can see the stripes going down. Very similar in shape to the Ferrari. Let me fetch the Ferrari in. Size wise, very similar. I I think the Tobaldi may be one or two millimetres longer. But the shape, very similar. It's a nice looking pen. It's again, it's a pen I'm still on the first fill of ink. One of the issues I have with this pen, and you're going to see it now, I'm twisting, but there's a lot of friction between the threads. Now the threads, they're plastic on plastic. I've already put silicon grease on these threads but it's still very, very stiff. It's as if it's catching when I'm trying to take it off. It's another, it's another nib, number six size nib there. It's a broad. Can you guess I like broads at the moment? The section is actually quite small and that will unscrew. 
Now we've got a metal fittings here, so it came off a lot easier. There's the converter. As I said, my biggest issue, and I can feel it catching, it, there's a lot of friction. It's on these threads taking the cap on and off. So this is a Tibaldi. Bernernia. Again, we have a broad nib. This was 265 Australian dollars. In terms of the width of the line that I see, I don't think this is as thick as what I see from the Visconti Breeze. Different manufacturers, obviously, but I just think it's interesting when you look at the lines for pens that are meant to be broad or medium. doesn't really matter, but whatever size class, just to look at the differences, I think that's quite interesting. Our ink today is by Diamine. And it's called Ruby Blues. This was from the 2021 ink event calendar. I think in terms of the ink, it's a nice blue colour. But what I like with this is we should be able to see, and there it comes over on the camera, we've got a nice red sheen coming through there. Drying times, immediate. Looks a lot wetter, doesn't it? 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. Still fairly wet after a minute. What I'm going to do, just on the line above, I'm going to leave it for two minutes. Two minutes. It's still smudging a little bit. And certainly coming over the camera now, I'm seeing a lot of that red sheen coming through on my writing. So this is the Tibaldi Bononia Bora Bora with Diamine Ruby Blues. Just going to reposition the paper and we can get the final three pens coming through. There we go. My fourth pen for the month. Going back to Leonardo, this is the Leonardo Magico. And this is in the meal or honey colour. Very unusual colour for me. I was be really being experimental when I ordered this, I can tell you. It's still nice. There's browns, there's golden colours in there. When I saw the picture of this, I thought it was a bit more orange than it turned out to be. And I've got to be honest, I'm glad it is because I can now get away with some nice brown inks in this. It's a pen, it's a piston filler. It's got an ink window. To me, the ink window is what makes this magical because I can see what my ink level is. As you can see there, we've got a nice ready brown ink in at the moment. The nib on this, this is a broad nib. I ordered this with the gold colored trim because I thought, well, that would go nice with the brown. So this pen, again, I'm just going to write Leonardo. And it's the Memento Magico. It's a broad nib. The price for this in Australian dollars was 260. I've just noticed I lied to you about the price of the Benonia. The Benonia is 255 not 265. That's what I get from having all my writing cramped up on my script. The ink, Robert Oster. Terracotta. I love this ink in this pen. I think it looks really nice. There we go, let me just pop the pen next to it. I think the ink and the pen fetch the colours out of each other. When I first got this pen, I did put an orange ink in it, hated it. It's one of the few times where I haven't written off a whole fill, I just put it down the sink. Put this terracotta in there, wow, it's nice, I love it together. Let's take a look at our drying times, so immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. 
Oh, got a bit of blue there, but it's still smudging. One minute. Yep, after a minute, that's nice and dry. Here, I will apologise. I do clean my fingers off after each go, but obviously I can't get everything off. So occasionally I get this cross-contamination. So that's why I try to use a different finger when I'm using these paler colours. But anyway, this is the Leonardo Memento Magico with Robert Oster Terracotta. For my fifth pen, we're going back to Visconti. As I said to you earlier, there was going to be another Visconti pen in here. This is a Visconti Van Gogh. And this is in the portrait colour. This looks so nice. It's nice colours. Now, I don't think this comes over on the camera. But each of these stripes here, those stripes going up all the way around, they're about two to three millimetres in width, which is why I don't think you'll see them on the camera. But it's as if it's put together by strips of material. Feels very nice. It's very tactile. You can feel it. It's like, like corrugated as you're going around it. Absolutely love this. Like the breeze, it's a magnetic cap. I would say the magnet on this is stronger than what's on the breeze. The nib, it's virtually identical to what's on the breeze. Same size, same shape, same smoothness. Beautiful to write with. Unlike the breeze, it's also a cartridge converter. I think the looks is what sets this apart. It does feel a little bit short in the hand. And then we've got a, me a metallic section there. We'll look at that as we go through the month to see how I get on with that. But this is a Visconti Van Gogh. It's another broad nib. Cost wise, 343 Australian dollars. Big jump in price even from the last pen. And if we look at it against that Visconti Breeze, it's more than double the cost. The ink by Dye Mine. And it's marine. I like this ink. It's got a little bit of a green tinge to it, but there's again there's a lot of blue. And I think it goes well with the patterning and the colour that's in the actual pen itself. Drying times, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Almost dry. Belt and braces, one minute. After a minute, as we expect, that's nice and dry. So this is the Visconti Van Gogh with Diamine Marine. The final pen for July. I'm going to be very honest with you, it's my favourite pen. It's the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in Dark Hawaii. Just going to turn this around. So we've got this spaghetti patterning on there. We've got different shades of blue. We've got dark blues. We've got blues here. They remind me of the sea coming up on the shore. So we've got that brightness, that little white tinge to it. Then we've got browns. I absolutely love this pen. It's so nice. It's a good fit. It's the Grand Air version. Fits so nicely in my hand. I've never even thought of trying it. I think it will post, but I've got to be honest, why would I bother? It's such a nice fit. Quick look at the nib there. This is a piston filler. Unlike the Magico, no ink window. That's the only thing which lets this down. I'd love for there to be an ink window, just so that I can see how much ink is left. I'm just moving the paper up slightly. Let's do some writing though, shall we? This is the Leonardo. For sake of space, I'm going to say it's the MZG, Memento Zero Grande. It's a medium nib. The cost for this, 
377 Australian dollars. I'm glad I've got this in a medium. When I bought it, I was still into the more medium sized nibs. I wasn't really into broad nibs. I don't think I'd want a broad nib in this. I quite enjoy the medium nib, the way it writes, the way it looks. The ink is by Pure Pens. It's actually made for them by Diamine and it's called Westgate Hotel. This is part of their Chartist series of inks, which was produced to celebrate the Chartist movement in Wales. It's really nice. I'm not sure yet if you'll see it, but I get a nice red sheen on there. Yeah, it's seen a little bit. We'll give it a chance to dry properly, then we'll have another look. Drying times. So we've got immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. Still quite wet after a minute. It's on the line above two minutes. After two minutes, still a tiny bit of smudging coming on. Now, hopefully you can see this coming through on the camera now. And certainly see that red sheen coming through where I've been writing. So this is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande with Pure Pens Westgate Hotel. Just going to clear this off and then I'll fetch in all the pens for one final look. So here are the pens. Before we look at them, I'm just going to fetch in this. This is a little B6 size notebook I have. This is Tomai River 68 GSM. And just really to show you, A, I make mistakes when I'm not on camera as well, but even on this Tomai River, don't see much in the way of sheen coming from that Robert Oster Fire and Ice. But the Tabaldi Benonia with that Diamine Ruby Blues. And down here, the Westgate Hotel. Also get a nice amount of sheen coming off that. This notebook sits in my Gale and Leather folio, just so I know what I've got in each pen. So the pens for July of 2022. We've got the Visconti Breeze with Robert Oster Fire and Dice. The Leonardo Ferrari with Diamine Asa Blue. The Tabaldi Bononia with Diamine Ruby Blues. The Leonardo Magico with Robert Oster Terracotta. The Visconti Van Gogh with Diamine Marine. And the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande with Pure Pens Westgate Hotel. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on the pens that I'm going to be using? I want to grow my collection of Italian pens. Are there any other manufacturers that you think are worth me to look at? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.